Hi, today I have a 2001 7.3 that's a hard start and runs rough when cold. It can actually become a no start when it's under 50 degrees. So you've got to check, of course, make sure that your batteries are up and that your data stays live in your scanner because these 7.3s won't start sometimes when the batteries are low and if the voltage drops below 9 volts they'll drop out. It's pretty much up to at least 2000 and back. They've gotten a little bit better with the cable routing after that, but you got to make sure the batteries are good and that it's cranking good. Make sure the oil is the right oil and it's not too old, hopefully less than 5,000 miles and the oil level's up. And then we're going to check the reservoir here and make sure that the oil is within one inch from the top here. So I'm going to pull out the 3 sixteenths Allen. Just sticking it down here. You can see the oil level is about an inch or so below the top. And to test this one, I'm using the Auto Ingenuity because it's one of the best ones that I've found for the price and for the quality. Independent shops use it and love it because it works so well on all makes and models. So I'm going to go ahead and do the injective buzz test because you need to find some way to do the, the uh, injective test and listen to it, listen to the cycle of them to see which injectors may be sticking. So while the engine's really cold and has not yet been started today, and it's um, as cold as it's going to be, it's probably in the 60s here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the buzz test and then we can listen to it. And we also count to see which cylinders it is. We wanna hear a nice sharp clatter. If it sounds like it's muffled, then that injector's sticking. So here with the auto ingenuity, I'm gonna go ahead and initiate the buzz test. Okay, you can hear how bad some of those were. So we definitely have some injectors sticking here. We have some issues. So we're gonna monitor the RPM. Well, we'll monitor the IPR percentage. We'll monitor the injection pressure, how fast it builds, because we wanna make sure that it builds above 500, and also the RPM, that way we know that the data is staying live. This will tell us our batteries are good. This would tell us that, um, how that, that make sure that it's cranking good, that the pressure is building above the 500 that we need. And the IPR is going to tell us more or less how much it's laboring or how much it has to close it to achieve the desired the, um, amount of pressure that we need to make the engine start and run. Usually on a 7.3 we see it somewhere around say 12 to 15 cold and more like 9 to 12 when it's running warm at, and that's at an idle. It's about the only time you can tell once it's going down the road that's going to vary on load, air temperature, oil, oil type, all that different stuff, too much variables, so we can't check it going down the road, just pretty much at a idle or a key on engine off. And they always default to that 15% or 14.84. So let's go ahead and start this one up so you know what I'm talking about. I always like to crank the engine with the key off and out of the ignition. I just jump the solenoid over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and crank it. We wanna have a nice even crank on it because if all the cylinders have the same compression, we're going to get it from every cylinder have the same amount of resistance. So I'm going to show a good and a bad one. Here, here's this one. And by comparison, here's an 0373, a 2003 73. So the starter wire is a little bit different. We just disconnect it here, take it over there. But listen to the way it sounds, this one, how it has the flare up. This one has a base engine problem with a compression issue. Okay, this is going to be the startup of it. And notice just the top three again, because that's the only ones I have a feed going to. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key on, wait for the glow plug light to go out. And we'll start cranking it and see how long the ICP pressure, again, because we want to see it above 500, how hard the IPR valve works, and the RPM more or less just to make sure that the data stays live. So here we go. So we 
Started up there, pressure came up. I'm going to remove the valve cover on this side just to show the um, stiction, how you can look at the oil spill spouts and see what's going on with it. But this is also a good opportunity to, to show what happens with these k or these oil type air filters because I see this quite a bit. As you see here, we once I removed it, this is the way it fits. And that's so common with these things, mostly just because of when the filter starts to get restricted or suck in these sides, they're pretty weak on both sides. And also you can see here the dust on here, that there's not any dust along this edge. So it's obvious that it's not sealing very well. So we're getting a lot of dirt that's going into the engine. You can see here, no sealing, no sealing along there. And then look at the, the turbo. Look at all the dirt that's inside of here. It's all just going through the motor. So we have there, look at the turbo blades and see how much they're worn. And see if we have any signs of wear. And the same abrasive dirt that went through the turbo here causes the turbo to wear, also wears the cylinder walls out. That's why we check the crank on these before we start to do any work or try to sell the customers injectors or anything else because it's really hard to collect thousands of dollars for doing injectors when you gotta tell them, oh no wait, your engine's bad. So we wanna do some of these checks too while we're going after it and while we're checking it out. The only trick I can share with taking this valve cover off, bolts are pretty much straightforward, except for here on the crankcase ventilation. Don't take it off because then those seals are swollen and you have problems getting it back together. If you do do that, injector O-rings do fit. But instead of removing that, just take an open end wrench or even the box end and loosen the bolt up here underneath this. A few turns and you can take it out by hand and then it saves you a lot of time to not having to take this off and look for O-rings for it. Okay, with the valve cover off, I'm gonna go ahead and do the injector buzz test one more time before I show the spills. Also, let me just show here, the um, just so I can show you the oil temp. I should have showed that first too. So here we have the oil temperature at roughly 70 degrees in the way it's running. So now we'll go back here to the uh, injector buzz test. Start that. Pretty much two, four, and eight on this side didn't do anything. You could hear a six and how much difference they sounded. So let's go ahead and fire this one up and look at the spill spell. Okay, here's going to be the before. I just got the engine started and it just did the oil change. Now here it is with the pedal to the floor. Listen, it's to the floor. That's the response I'm getting out of it right now. It's still to the floor. I've just got so many cylinders not contributing, it's not going anywhere, it doesn't have any power to create boost. Okay, it cleared up probably within maybe two to five miles in the same amount of time too. Let's say within five, 10 minutes it cleared up. And as you can see, it's running smooth. And this is what I was saying as far as about 9% IPR with the oil temp now 190 being all warmed up and running smooth. And that's what we want to see, that's normal. Okay, I tried the additive in the oil and it didn't make a difference on this truck so I end up having to replace the injectors what I want to do is show the difference the way the injectors sound with the new ones in so you can do a comparison so using the auto ingenuity I'm going to go ahead and initiate the uh, injector buzz test that way you can hear what a good one sounds like versus the previous where they sound when some of them were sticking so here it is how they sound go ahead and start it off
as you can see none of those are sticking now we'll go ahead and get the vehicle to start and drive it when after you've done the injectors they always start off rough and run that way for anywhere from five to even 20 miles they still run rough so there's no need for me to show the running rough mostly this one is just will show with the auto ingenuity how with a bi-directional scanner what you can do and how it can help you to diagnose a vehicle and also the difference in the sounds between a good compression bad compression and injectors that are sticking so hopefully this helps if you find these videos informative please like and subscribe and help me out thank you